hope you are excited as we have our very esteemed speaker, Justice Sunyauskas, Senior Investment Advisor at Invest Lithuana, to share with us on this topic. Lithuana, gateway to EU for your fintech. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Justas. I'm a fintech investment advisor at Invest Lithuania. Thank you for an uh, introduction and thank you for having me. Um, I'm very delighted to be here today with you and to chat about a couple of things. So number one, for those of you who don't know much to tell you more about Invest Lithuania, who we are, what we do, and how can companies benefit from partnering with us. And the second topic, of course, is uh, fintech in Lithuania. How did Lithuania become such a major fintech hub? How do we rank compared to other countries? And how can Lithuania help you to scale your fintech in Europe by offering its regulation, fin uh, financial infrastructure, or talent pool? So to start with, invest, um, Invest Lithuania is a governmental entity that was put together to promote Lithuania, its business environment. And we do that by helping global companies to expand their footprint to Lithuania um, and by making sure that this transition for them is as smooth as possible. Of course, fintech is something that we constantly think of and put high on our priority list. That is why we have a team of people like myself who only work with fintech companies. And in addition to advising them how to expand in Lithuania and scale in Europe, very important objective of our fintech task force is to mediate uh, between the ecosystem, um, companies, associations, um, accelerators on one hand and governmental stakeholders on another. So in that case, we'll make sure that all parties are heard and together we try to um, determine not only new opportunities for Lithuania where we can grow, but also areas of improvement and push for meaningful change. So about time to move to another topic, which is of course fintech and Lithuania as a fintech gateway to Europe and how we can help you scale. So in order to claim that uh, jurisdiction is a major fintech hub, I believe that there should be a proven record of a lot of fintech activities, lots of innovation happening in that specific jurisdiction. So if we look at the recent history of Lithuania's fintech, we see that at the moment we have over 200 fintech companies operating in the Lithuania market, regardless of uh, their business model. Over half of them engage into license activities and they require some sort of fintech license. So if we take into consideration only this number, um, no other European country besides United Kingdom hosts more licensed fintech companies than we do. And that makes the second largest fintech hub in Europe. Furthermore, Vilnius, our capital was um, recently ranked as the best city globally for attracting tech startups where greenfield FDI projects made in uh, sectors of IT and software were measured per capita. Also, our competitive business environment is very interesting subject to touch as Lithuania with short setup times and uh, adequate level of bureaucracy ranks 11th globally or fourth in Europe in terms of being uh, in terms of doing business alongside such countries as Sweden, United Kingdom, and Denmark. So given all this, especially uh, the level of financial innovation, tech readiness, and our competitive business environment, that makes us our fintech um, ecosystem very active, vibrant, and it not only empowers growth, but also gives us the ability to build bridges between countries. And that is why Lithuania or second year in a row was ranked as fourth best location globally to develop your fintech after US, UK, and Singapore. But that was not always the case. In fact, if we go five years or six years back in time, in 2015 or 16, things didn't look so good and things were moving at much slower pace. Our small market, uh, was dominated by relatively low number of banks. And even though those banks had a good reputation, good trust and credit rates, they were not so quick to adapt and, and not so quick to catch up with innovation. And why is that? Because innovation is a huge expense that in 
very concentrated market with a relatively low competition, nobody wanted or dared to take. So about that time, it was decided that in order to accelerate innovation, in order to increase quality of service and also reduce price for end users, we have to create competitional pressure to current market, market players by bringing new ones to the game. And the best way to do that is to make our fintech environment more friendly and welcoming to fintechs and investors to simultaneously increase the number of um, market participants as well as fintech adoption rate. So when we speak about driving force of fintech adoption rate, there are many things to consider such as regulation, cost of service, um, even customer demand and customer needs, customer habits. So Lithuania adopted fintech strategy with the aim to juggle between customer centricity by giving fintechs freedom to innovate and offer new type of services to customers and by understanding mitigating risk and addressing those risks to the market by giving companies confidence to launch. So since the adoption of our fintech strategy, things started to accelerate. But of course, uh, our fintech strategy was not the only thing that pushed us into this steep growth. Thanks to EU, harmonized market and uh, common licensing rules, the companies that get licensed in Lithuania, they not only get access to our internal market, but also they can access the whole European economic area, uh, which is 500 million potential clients in 33 countries. And that is uh, really a lot. So if a license issued in one country is as good as license issued in another country, then there are other important things that has to be considered when choosing location, such as how fast you can enter the market, how the regulator treats you, or even how the regulator speaks to you. So Bank of Lithuania is globally recognized uh, for its level in, of in, innovation and it, its co cooperativeness. So Global Impact Award, recent Global Impact Award and uh, Central Banking Awards is a great proof of that. So smooth cooperation and synergy between um, regulator and market players is a must in order for both sides to take the most of it. So that is why the Bank of Lithuania is guided by a principle of being a partner rather than a watchdog. So companies that engage into license activities here in Lithuania, they definitely appreciate this. So speaking of license activities, the Bank of Lithuania managed to streamline its licensing uh, procedures. So right now on average, it takes about six to nine months to get licensed here in Lithuania. And that's one of the fastest, if not the fastest time in, in Europe. But let me be clear, it was achieved without letting market participants to cut any corners, without um, making any discounts or even without taking any additional risks. It was achieved rather by pushing for digitalization and distributing resources properly. So again, if those five years ago companies that wanted to apply for a license, they had to physically go to the headquarters of Bank of Lithuania and submit tons of paperwork. Now everything is moving to digital space and most of the things can be done online. Most importantly, the Bank of Lithuania switched its working language to English. Furthermore, we have a team of dedicated specialists in newcomers program that will guide companies throughout the whole application uh, procedures and even they can meet companies at very early stage and give them informal advice whether they're good to go and apply for license or they should take another direction. And as you can imagine, it helps to save time for both parties. So. Even though those might not look as a huge changes, but all of them are very meaningful and definitely appreciated by the ecosystem. Because even by today, there aren't many regulators with whom you can discuss your business plans over a cup of coffee. But having many companies on a map and, and giving them fast market uh, entry is not a win in itself if those companies are not doing something innovative if they're not meeting with a growing customer demand. 
So a good way uh, to help those companies achieving these goals is by giving them access to financial infrastructure and giving them an ability to innovate. So that is why the Bank of Lithuania and also other market players launch sandboxes where companies can test and pilot the new ideas, new business concepts in supervised environments. But that is only one side of the coin because these sandboxes are as equally important for the regulator to understand the growing demand, new ideas, new concepts, new business models, and identified risks arising from that at the very early stages. So that is why the regulator has to be very close to innovation to be able to understand that, but not too close, nor to, not to interfere by over-regulating. So that is why we have sandboxes such as LB chain for the things that are yet to be regulated and sandboxes such as regulatory sandboxes for the things that might help fintech companies by re reducing uh, regulatory burden and having more time and resources for innovation. But probably the biggest value proposition when it comes to uh, financial infrastructure is Centrelink, our unique euro payment system. Um, so initially it was launched as central bank clearing system for commercial banks to do euro payments. So when fintech company wanted to explore opportunities in fields of payments and remittance, they had to rely on banks, rails of infrastructure and banks rules of the game. So in such highly concentrated market as Lithuania, if you go to one bank and that bank says no, you go to another and another says no, and third says no, you're simply out of the game. So by that time, it was decided that in order to keep this payment infrastructure for selected few, we don't have to do that. We can open it to all licensed market players, such as payment institutions, electronic money institutions, credit unions, and allow them to create their own financial infrastructure without having a middleman in between. So not only it gives those fintechs an ability to reach 50,000 banks and branches globally, but also it rapidly increase operational speed and reduce operational costs. Another perk that comes together with Centrelink is an ability to issue unique IBAN codes to your customers. So customers of those fintechs, they can have current accounts without being customers of banks. So more abilities to choose, the better access to finance. So just to give you an indication on, on the impact that Centrelink had on our ecosystem, in 2019 alone, Centrelink cleared more than 88 billion euros or about equivalent of 110 billion US dollars. So I believe those numbers speak for themselves. Um, but let's be clear, not every fintech needs license as well as not every fintech needs financial infrastructure, but every fintech needs people to drive their growth. And talent here plays, plays a key role. I'm quite confident to say that one of our biggest strengths here in Lithuania is our talent. And a good example of that could be our ability to communicate. Um, being a small country and having a micro language that is spoken by very few people in, in very concentrated area puts us under constant pressure of uh, adapting. And that is why we started learning foreign languages at a very early age. And as a result, right now, more than half of our population speak at least two foreign languages. And that's not only English, but also others. So this sets a perfect basis for international companies to look for talent here in Lithuania. Furthermore, we have one of the most educated workforces in, in, in Europe with 56% of our adult population having a higher university degree, it makes us third in Europe in this regard. And our universities are doing a great job, not only in this sense, as at the moment we have over 10,000 students in the pipeline in IT studies alone. So historically, Lithuanians were very keen on applied and fundamental sciences, such as engineering, 
math. So when the digital economy started booming, booming it was a rather natural shift for them to, to move to IT. And thanks to that, at the moment, we have around 40,000 ICT professionals in employment market. So in terms of talent, we have highly skilled and educated talent. And in terms of talent availability, we're not stopping here. In shorter term, we're trying to meet this demand by deploying external sources. That's why we have multiple programs dedicated to bringing talent from abroad or even our own diaspora or streamline procedures for foreign entrepreneurs who want to come to Lithuania together with their businesses. In the longer term, we're trying to meet this demand by setting close cooperation between all levels of our ecosystem and trying to determine how the future will look like, what the future fintech positions will be in need and what trades people have to learn, and helping our local universities to launch their independent fintech study programs where student, students can learn new innovative things such as artificial intelligence, financial engineering, as well as fintech entrepreneurship and compliance. So hopefully that should help us to stay not so, uh, only on top of the things, but will help us to just to be um, important fintech hub in, in Europe and also in the world. So to summarize everything that was said before without repeating myself, here is a very short list of few companies that are operating in Lithuanian markets, not only by those companies are serving Lithuanian customers, but also they're physically here, either by being licensed here or having teams. So such companies such as Revolut that has a banking license here in Lithuania or Noom from Singapore uh, that has an electronic money institution license or Revel system from United States that has a huge engineering team. They're all here and I believe that they all can confirm what was said before and prove me being right. So if you found any of this information interesting and if you are willing to explore opportunities in Lithuania, or even if you're not sure if that's the right way for you to take, just drop us a line and we will make sure to make that happen. Thank you very much.